Welcome back to Exercise Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, the general topic we're going to discuss is AMP or adenosine monophosphate, AMPK, and muscle energetic stress. And ultimately what we're going to see is that the molecule AMP, adenosine monophosphate, is going to serve as a, as a biosignal for energetic stress really in any cell, but we're talking about this specifically in the muscles, skeletal muscles that is, because skeletal muscle is the workhorse of the body. When we start exercising, and really as the intensity and duration of the exercise go up, those muscles are going to have to work harder and harder and harder and that adenosine monophosphate is going to serve as that signal that we need to continue catabolism and start making more energy, thus the energetic stress. Now before we get into that, I just want to review this general scheme right here which you've probably seen over and over again in your ex-phys course, possibly anatomy and all that. And so the enzyme ATP synthase, which is a part of oxidative phosphorylation in the mitochondria of skeletal muscle cells, ATP synthase is going to convert ADP to ATP. That's the predominant source of the majority of ATP that a cell can produce. Any cell really, but we're talking about muscles here. And then remember that ATP is used by the muscle for a lot of different processes, but one of the primary uh, consumers of that ATP is myosin. When we have uh, muscle contraction, remember that myosin, in order to do the power stroke, at some point in the cycle is going to have to hydrolyze that ATP through its ATPase action, and we're going to get back that ADP. And of course, that ADP can go back and be rephosphorylated by ATP synthase, and this is going to kind of be a cycle right here. Let's think about this for a second. If we're performing heavy exercise particularly, I mean it can be any exercise, but particularly as the intensity of the exercise go up, goes up and we start doing it for a longer and longer period of time, what's going to happen to the rate and degree of ATP hydrolysis? Well, especially if the intensity goes up, our rate of ATP hydrolysis is going to increase. And as we keep going longer and longer, and the more we're contracting muscles, the more power strokes that we're actually performing by the sarcomere individually, the more ATP is going to be hydrolyzed. I think that makes sense to you, because if we're having more muscle contractions, more sarcomeres shortening, there's going to be more hydrolysis of ATP to ADP by myosin. And so ATP hydrolysis is going to be higher with increasing exercise intensity and duration, and then also that's going to, as you can imagine, cause adenosine diphosphate, or ADP, to accumulate. And so we're going to have an increase in ADP. Now that ADP can, can be rephosphorylated by ATP synthase to make ATP, but in skeletal muscle in particular, it has another purpose. When this ADP accumulates, um, two molecules of ADP can in fact come together and react with this enzyme, which normally in most biochemistry textbooks, you'll hear it referred to as adenylate kinase, but usually in the context of exercise physiology, it's usually referred to as myokinase because one of the most important applications of this kinase is in muscle, thus the name myokinase. And what this enzyme does, regardless of how you name it, is it takes two molecules of ADP and essentially takes one of the phosphates from one of them and puts it on the other. So if you think about it, both ADPs here, both of them have two phosphates. So if you take one of the phosphates from one of them and put it on the other, one of them will just be left with one phosphate, AMP. The other will now have three ATP. And so this reaction does two things. One, it gives you some ATP. It's not a huge source of it. Really, the ATP synthase is the predominant source, but you do get some ATP if you notice. But the other thing that's very important for the perspective of the cell's metabolism is it produces an adenosine monophosphate, or AMP. And like I mentioned at the very start of this video, adenosine monophosphate is going to be a signal for energetic stress. And we don't necessarily mean energetic stress as a negative thing. Usually we refer to stress as being some kind of insult or it's negative. You're stressed out by your classes, excuse me, and exams. But in this case, it's really just a stress as in it's something that's going to require the muscle to be more metabolically active in terms of catabolism. Now, what this adenosine monophosphate is going to do is it's going to be sensed by a number of proteins. One of the, and probably the most important one, is going to be AMPK. Now, AMPK stands for adenosine monophosphate activated protein kinase. And so no one wants to say that. So they always just refer to it as AMPK. And AMPK is going to be a major control point 
really for catabolic metabolism. And so in general, anytime you have uh, significantly active AMPK, you're going to have a bunch of catabolic processes that occur. For example, if AMPK has become activated, we're going to have a higher degree of fatty acid oxidation, meaning beta oxidation of fatty acids. We're going to have increased glucose uptake by cells and increased glycolysis. And just in general, we're going to have increased ca catabolism. That's going to include some amino acids, although that's not going to be occurring to any uh, appreciable extent. But in general, uh, we can actually degrade more proteins uh, whenever AMPK is maximally activated. Also, there's going to be an increased rate of autophagy, which is really just the degradation of, of cellular components that are not necessary anymore or damaged or oxidized in some way. And then one very important thing that's going to happen when AMPK becomes activated is in addition to promoting catabolism, it's going to drop the rate of protein synthesis. And the way that it drops protein synthesis is by inhibition of this protein complex called mTOR. Now, we have not in this playlist yet discussed mTOR, but it suffices to say that mTOR is going to be very, very critical, very important for muscle protein synthesis. And if you're concerned about muscle hypertrophy and myofibrillogenesis, which is really just the synthesis of new, uh, you know, things like actin and myosin, the whole filament kind of uh, pro uh, portions of the muscle, then you're going to be very interested in maximizing mTOR. And so AMPK is going to inhibit mTOR. So while AMPK is going to be activated, you're going to be having inhibition of protein synthesis while at the same time promotion of all sorts of catabolic processes. And AMPK is only going to be active when you have a lot of AMP that's present. And AMP is only going to be present in a large amount, large enough to activate AMPK, whenever you're having in the middle of um, acute exercise, and especially when the exercise intensity and duration are both very high. Okay, now what does this say in a nutshell? It basically says that once you start exercising, and of course the intensity and duration of the exercise go up. You're going to have a lot of ATP hydrolysis, which I think makes sense to you. And in addition to the ATP hydrolysis, there's going to be a concomitant increase in ADP concentration because that's the product of ATP hydrolysis. But then this myokinase, sometimes referred to as adenylate kinase, takes those ADP molecules and performs a phosphate transfer from one to the other which regenerates one ATP, which is nice, but we also get adenosine monophosphate. And so that AMP is going to activate AMPK, which in turn is going to trigger the activation of general catabolism, so fatty acid oxidation, glycolysis, autophagy, but it's also going to inhibit protein synthesis via its direct inhibition on mTOR. And we're going to talk a lot more about mTOR in a future video, so make sure to join us there. And we'll see the interplay that mTOR is actually going to have with AMPK. It turns out that AMPK, as we said, is an inhibitor of mTOR. And so if we want to uh, maximize hypertrophy really after exercise, we need to minimize AMPK after exercise and maximize mTOR because that's going to give us the most muscle protein synthesis um, and ultimately hypertrophy and myofibrillogenesis. But to do that after exercise, we need AMPK to be uh, minimal and mTOR activity to be maximal. Right? And we'll talk about what things affect that and how uh, that can be augmented or uh, interfered with in the, uh, one of the future videos in this playlist. So hopefully this video made some sense and you hopefully understand the energetic stress and how AMPK and AMP play a role in that. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.